other stories making headlines at this hour. North Korean leader Kim, Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong attacked President Yoon suk yeols New Year's Day address, calling President Yoon a special contributor enhancing the regime's military capabilities. Seoul's defense ministry hit back, calling the remarks nothing more than a ridiculous statement. Opposition leader Lee Jae-myung, who was stabbed on his neck on Tuesday, is now recovering in hospital after surgery. Now an investigation is underway as police are also ramping up protection efforts for politicians ahead of the high-stakes April general elections. Over in Japan, the New Year's Day earthquake that hit Ishikawa Prefecture has now left 62 people dead. Dozens of others are also injured as aftershocks continue to be reported. Good afternoon. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong attacked President Yoon suk yeols New Year's Day address, calling President Yoon a special contributor in enhancing the regime's military capabilities. Seoul's defense ministry hit back, calling the remarks nothing more than a ridiculous statement. Choi Min-jong reports. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong has sarcastically hit back at President Yoon suk yeols New Year's Day address, which promised a stronger deterrent system with the U.S. this year. In a statement directed at the South Korean president late Tuesday, Kim gave Yoon top credit for making the regime's military stronger. She added that his deterrence plan is justification for the North's plans to enhance its nuclear forces. North Korea is seeking to secure the legitimacy of advancing its nuclear capabilities through President Yoon suk yeols words and actions. It can be assessed that the more President Yoon strengthens extended deterrence against North Korea, the more North Korea will try to advance its nuclear capabilities. Kim Yo-jong said security anxiety has become a part of everyday life in South Korea thanks to Yoon. She also noted that the North's military activities, which had been restricted for years under the September 19th Inter-Korean Military Agreement, could thrive once again thanks to South Korea's decision to partially suspend the agreement. Kim also made comparisons between President Yoon and his predecessor Moon Jae-in, who she called a brilliant and cunning person, but also said the North had wasted time due to Moon's peace drive. But Kim said Yoon had enabled the regime to magnify what was lost during the Moon administration by more than 20 times. In response to the statement, South Korea's defense ministry on Wednesday strongly condemned Kim's words, saying that it is nothing more than a ridiculous argument and compared the North to a criminal who committed a crime because of innocent citizens or the police. The ministry vowed to establish a firm military readiness posture and punish any provocations by North Korea immediately, strongly and to the end. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. President Yoon suk yeol is expected to continue his global engagements this year as part of his aim to turn Korea into a global pivotal state. Among the key agendas is enhancing nuclear-based deterrence to counter North Korean threats. Our presidential office correspondent Oh Soo-young has more. South Korea's diplomacy in 2024 will focus on building up minilateral networks, small coalitions of like-minded countries, to overcome risks to national and economic security. First tackling North Korea's growing nuclear threat, President Yoon suk yeol will continue building up Seoul's security ties with the United States, adding an unprecedented nuclear dimension. After launching a new bilateral nuclear consultative group last year, the Allies are expected to produce nuclear response guidelines by June to prepare for a possible nuclear provocation by Pyongyang, as well as launch nuclear response drills in their annual joint military training. On a trilateral basis with Japan, based on their Camp David summit last August, Yoon will continue efforts to ramp up military cooperation against North Korea's threats and broader joint initiatives for peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. Next on economic security, Yoon will strive to expand South Korea's export markets, striking up new trade deals and partnerships to secure supply chains of materials that are critical to future industries like semiconductors, secondary batteries, defense and digital solutions. However, external factors could pose challenges for Seoul. 
First, the US presidential race in November has caused concern among its allies that the possible return of Donald Trump could once again undermine America's global security commitments from South Korea and Japan's trilateral cooperation with Washington to Ukraine and NATO countries. Also, ongoing US-China tensions, wars in Ukraine and the Middle East, and the continued rise of nationalism could further hinder global trade and cooperation to address shared challenges like climate change, the social impact of digital technology, and the development of the global South. If and when Trump comes back to the White House, uh, there will be a great need for other countries, the current allies of the United States, uh, to work together even more closely. So these are all the, the actions being taken, efforts being made by all players around the world uh, with the possible new face of the United States government in mind. And so uh, it's really critical for Korea to strengthen uh, its, uh, you know, its cooperation with these kind of uh, key allies, uh, going beyond uh, the traditional allies like Japan uh, and the United States. Thus, through his summitry last year, Yoon called for global solidarity and a rules-based world order, pledging Seoul's contributive diplomacy to strengthen cooperation for freedom, peace and prosperity. He's also expanded South Korea's mini lateral networks of partners for defence cooperation and technological development. In 2024, South Korea will host the third summit for democracy, first initiated by President Joe Biden, to address threats to freedom, the rule of law and human rights across societies, along with two follow-up summits on the safe development of artificial intelligence. The country has also begun its two-year term as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council sensing an opportunity amid crises to expand its role in the world as a crucial security and economic partner, so will continue its efforts to become a global pivotal state. Young, Arirang News. South Korea's top office announced Wednesday that the New Year agenda briefings from the ministries will be held in debate form, with government officials, experts and citizens taking part. A series of 10 debates will begin Thursday, focusing on topics such as housing, employment, national safety, media policy and low birth rate measures, all within the broader context of livelihoods and reform. President Yoon suk yeol on Wednesday also plans to devote his full efforts to improving people's livelihoods as he hosts the leaders of the nation's constitutional institutions and prominent polit politicians for a New Year's greeting. According to the top office, three ordinary citizens were also in attendance, invited for their acts of courage and warmth, including saving an unconscious person in the street. South Korea's economic policy direction for this year aims at revitalizing people's livelihoods. During a party government consultative meeting held on Wednesday, Finance Minister Choi Sang Mok stated that the government plans to achieve this by focusing on four key areas restoring people's livelihoods, managing potential risks, creating a dynamic economic environment, and strengthening economic policies for future generations. He expects the country's economic recovery to continue throughout this year, but raised concerns regarding people's livelihoods due to the accumulated burdens of high prices and high interest rates, as well as differences in the pace of recovery by sector. In response, with a focus on price stability, the government plans to further strengthen efforts to boost the overall economy, including domestic consumption. Opposition leader Lee Jae-myung, who was stabbed on his neck on Tuesday, is now recovering in hospital after surgery. An investigation is underway as police are also ramping up protection efforts for politicians ahead of the April general elections. Shin Se-byuk has the latest. Following a two-hour jugular vein reconstruction surgery on Tuesday evening, opposition Democratic Party leader Lee Jae-myung is currently in recovery in the intensive care unit at Seoul National University Hospital. He has regained consciousness, but only family members are allowed to visit him as of now. The DP leader was stabbed in the neck early on Tuesday after a tour of the construction site of a new airport in Busan. He was initially taken to Busan National University Hospital, but was later airlifted to Seoul at his family's request. A male suspect was arrested at the scene and has been identified as a man born in 1957, surnamed Kim. 
The police are likely to request an arrest warrant as early as Wednesday for the assailant on charges of attempted murder. The DP leadership during a meeting on Wednesday called the assault, quote, a blatant challenge to democracy. What happened yesterday was completely out of place in a democratic society. This act of terror on Lee represents a blatant challenge and a direct threat to democracy. We call on the authorities to conduct a swift and comprehensive investigation. The DP are holding an emergency party assembly to discuss the party's future operations. As for the investigation into the stabbing incident, prosecutors have set up a team to look into the attack. The National Police Agency has also formed a 69-member special investigation team to conduct a thorough and swift inquiry. Separately, the police have also formed a dedicated protection team for key political figures, including party leaders, following the recent assault on Lee. This is a departure from the usual protocol, where personal security teams are typically deployed for such individuals only during the official campaign period, starting 14 days before an election. This year's general elections begin their campaign period on March 28th. Xin Sebiao, Adidas News. Over in Japan, the New Year's Day earthquake that hit Ishikawa Prefecture has now left 62 people dead. Dozens of others are also injured as aftershocks continue to be reported. Our Che Su Hyung has the latest. At least 62 deaths have now been reported from the earthquake that hit Ishikawa Prefecture in the west of Japan on the first day of 2024. According to Japanese media outlets on Wednesday, more than 450 aftershocks have been monitored following the magnitude 7.6 quake. An estimated 136 people were also injured in Ishikawa Prefecture and neighboring areas. Currently, over 32,000 people are staying in shelters and the damage from the earthquake is severe. Shortly after the earthquake, more than 200 buildings in Wajima City were completely destroyed by fire. Nearby Suzu City was hit by a tsunami with an area of 100 metres from the port submerged. Major roads were tracked down the middle in places, with some cars falling into holes caused by the quake. Many rescue workers with the Japanese Self-Defense Forces have been trying to rescue people from collapsed buildings and supplies are being transported using helicopters. Local media outlets say casualties are expected to rise and that there is still a chance of more aftershocks. Moreover, a total of 15 millimeters of rain is forecast until Thursday, raising concerns about landslides. Cha Su Hyung, Adidang News. A Japan Airlines aircraft has collided with an earthquake relief aircraft at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. All passengers and crew members made it out of the passenger plane, but five crew members on board the Coast Guard plane lost their lives. Park Konu with the latest. A plane burst into flames at Tokyo's Haneda Airport following a collision with another aircraft. The Japan Airlines Airbus A350 had just arrived in Sapporo when it collided with a Japanese Coast Guard plane that was preparing for takeoff as part of relief efforts for the major earthquake that struck the previous day. An Associated Press report says five out of the six people on board the Coast Guard's Bombardier Dash 8 aircraft died. The pilot is reportedly in a critical condition. However, all 379 people on board the JAL plane survived the impact and were evacuated before the aircraft became fully engulfed in flames, escaping via emergency chutes. Firefighters spent approximately six hours extinguishing the flames, while all four runways at Haneda Airport were closed in the aftermath, leaving thousands of travelers stranded. Videos shared on social media showed passengers shouting inside the plane while the cabin filled with smoke. At landing, I felt strong shaking, and when I looked out the window, I saw sparks flying and burning, and when the plane stopped, in less than one minute, the cabin was full of smoke. Then the cabin attendant led us, and we escaped via the slide. I was scared to death. Meanwhile, according to the BBC, experts have delivered strong praise to crew members aboard the A350 for their handling of the situation, which saw passengers evacuated in about 20 minutes. 
While the cause of the collision has not yet been revealed, a JAL official said the A350 was making a normal entry and landing and that the aircraft had permission from aviation officials to land. Airbus, the aircraft manufacturer of the A350 plane, said it will send a specialist team to help with the investigation. Park Geun-hye, Arirang News. Hamas says its second-in-command has been killed in a blast in Beirut, sparking further tensions in the Middle East. The militant group is now planning to suspend ceasefire negotiations, currently in progress through the mediation of Egypt and Qatar. Lee Seung-jae has more. Hamas has confirmed that its second-in-command, Salah al-Aruri, was killed in a drone attack in Beirut. Lebanon's state-run national news agency said Wednesday that al-Rari, along with other Hamas members, were killed on Tuesday in a blast caused by an Israeli drone. However, the Israeli military has yet to comment on the matter. If Israel is behind the recent drone attack that killed the Palestinian militant group's senior leader, it would mean further escalation in the Middle East. Iran, which backs militant groups like Hamas and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, warned of strong resistance against Israel, while the Palestinian militant group said it would suspend ceasefire negotiations that were in progress through the mediation of Egypt and Qatar. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman said in a statement that the attack by Israel proves the country was built on terrorism and crime. He further explained that the killing of Hamas's second-in-command was an assassination and pointed out that it was a violation of Lebanon's sovereignty and territory. Hezbollah also sent a strong warning to Israel, saying that Israel's assassination of Arori is not a matter that will go unanswered or unpunished. Lebanese local media reported that around 6 p.m. on Tuesday, the Hamas office in the southern outskirts of Beirut was attacked by an unmanned aerial vehicle, adding that six people, including Arori, were killed. Al Aruri is the highest ranking Hamas member killed since the armed conflict began in October. Isinje, Arirang News. South Korea saw a record low number of registered births last year, while first grade elementary school enrollments are also expected to fall in March. According to the Ministry of the Interior and Safety on Wednesday, the total number of new registered births last year dropped to around 235,000. This is not only an 8 percent decrease on year, but also the lowest figure ever recorded. In December, the number of registered births dropped to around 16,000, a new record low. And based on December figures, 413,056 children are eligible to begin elementary school this year, down from the year before. South Korean tech giant LG Electronics OLED TVs have been named as some of the best TVs of 2024 by the U.S. Product Testers Consumer Reports. According to the industry sources on Wednesday, LG's 65-inch G3 OLED Evo TV came top of Consumer Reports' list of the best TVs overall for 2024. LG's 65-inch C3 OLED Evo TV came fifth. The report praised the G3 for its exceptional HDR picture performance and sound quality, and the C3 for its outstanding picture quality. Let's take a look at the latest news in the world now. In Ukraine, the capital Kyiv and northeastern city of Kharkiv were attacked by Russian hypersonic ballistic missiles on Tuesday morning, leaving at least four dead and 92 injured. Russia's air-launched hypersonic ballistic missile, the KH-47M2 Kinzhal, can fly at 10 times the speed of sound, making it more difficult to intercept. Russian forces have rarely deployed such expensive missiles against Ukraine due to cost restraints. The attacks closed down most cafes and restaurants in Kyiv and Kharkiv, while many stayed indoors and in shelters as the city was bombarded from the morning. The recent exchange of attacks between Russia and Ukraine began on Friday when Russia killed at least 41 civilians in its largest aerial attack of the war. The following day, a Ukrainian attack on the Russian city of Belgorod killed more than two dozen people. 
Turkish Interior Minister Ali Elikaya said on Tuesday that police had detained 33 people suspected of spying for Israel's Mossad intelligence service. As part of an investigation dubbed Operation Mall, police raided 57 locations in eight provinces under the guidance of the Istanbul Prosecutor's Counterterrorism Bureau and Turkey's MIT intelligence agency. Yerlikaya stated that alleged spies were aiming to identify, monitor, assault and kidnap foreign nationals living in Turkey. According to state-run Anadolu News, authorities are searching for 13 other suspects. The arrests follow Turkey's warning to Israel last month of serious consequences if Israel attempts to hunt down Hamas members outside of Palestinian territory. Harvard University president Claudine Gay has announced her resignation just six months into her presidency amid accusations of plagiarism and anti-Semitism. Gay was accused of plagiarism over a 1997 PhD dissertation where cases of inadequate citations were found. She was already facing calls to step down following a congressional hearing last month in which gay and other university presidents failed to explicitly condemn calls for genocide of Jewish people as bullying and harassment on campus. 53-year-old Claudine Gay was the first black president of Harvard University and only the second woman leader in Harvard's near 400-year history. Harvard stated on Tuesday that Alan M. Garber, the current provost and chief academic officer at Harvard, will step in as interim president. Nobel Peace Prize winner and the founder of Grameen Microfinance Bank, Muhammad Yunus, was sentenced to six months in jail on Monday for violating Bangladeshi labor laws. The Bangladeshi Labor Court found 67 employees of one of Yunus's companies, Grameen Telecom, had not been made permanent employees and that welfare and participation funds were not formed. The court also said the 5% of company dividends were supposed to be distributed to the staff. Yunus, who won the Nobel Prize for his microcredit initiatives, was granted bail on Monday, while the court gave the defense 30 days to appeal. He is also facing charges of corruption and fund embezzlement. However, his supporters claim the charges against him are politically motivated, and in August, more than 170 global leaders and Nobel laureates signed an open letter urging the government to suspend all legal proceedings against Yunus. Kim Jiang, Arirang News. Good afternoon. It's another cloudy and wet winter day for most places. Mountainous regions on Jeju could see up to 10 centimeters of snowfall with a heavy snow advisory issued there. And east of Jeollado and west of Gyeongsangnam-do province could see one to five centimeters of snow through this afternoon. Meanwhile, central regions could see a light mix of rain and snow in the afternoon. The dust level is up high again. It it won't be bad enough to have a dust advisory issued, but it is a good idea to have a face mask on today. Central parts of the country should have daytime highs that are similar to yesterday, but southern provinces should notice highs that are 1 to 4 degrees lower this afternoon. Daegu topping out at 8 degrees, Busan at 9 degrees this afternoon with some sunshine in Gyeongsangdo provinces and nearby areas. Then on Friday, we will notice temperatures steadily dropping, possibly waking up to a low of minus 8 degrees Celsius next Monday here in Seoul. But don't worry, we'll not go down any further than that through mid-January. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. Kim Jong-un's daughter, Jue, continues to be in the spotlight in the new year. The North Korean leader walked into a New Year's event with Jue right next to him. On her other side was Kim's wife, Lee Seo-ju.
There was the order of cease during the ceremony, where Kim Jong-un also kissed Chue on the cheek, for the first time shown publicly. This follows their visit to the Air Force headquarters together, and a photo shows Chue positioned in front of Kim Jong-un. Chue had previously been referred to as beloved child, but recently she is said to be called the morning star of Korea, all adding to speculation that the regime sees her as next in line. That is all for today. Thanks for watching.